Okay, good morning everyone. My name is uh, Karen Seelen. Ben uh, Grieven and I will be your presenters today. First of all, thank you for all attending. I will start with a short poll to make sure that everyone can hear us loud and clearly. Um, you will see it pop up on your screen um, at this moment. Can you see the poll if everyone um, is able to give their response? Okay, perfect. Almost everyone has answered the poll, so I will wait just for a minute. I can see that um, there is one person that is not hearing me. Um, make sure that your volume has been turned on. That would help a lot. I can see that there are still 20 people um, that did not give response. So I assume um, that you can all hear me clearly. In case there is a big problem, you can always use the chat box um, at the white bottom of your page. I will now share the results and you will see that everyone is quite able to hear me, um, except for one person. Um, please communicate um, with us by the chat box and we will try to fix the problem. In the meantime, I will move on to the most interesting part of the webinar, of course. Um, so Ben, I think um, your presentation is back visible. Um, so my name is uh, Karen Seele. I am the sales manager for Belgium at Talento. And before introducing the other speakers, I will set up some rules for the webinar in the first place. Everyone is muted automatically, as you will notice, which also means you won't be able to interrupt the speakers. Um, but of course, we appreciate your input. Um, so you can drop all your questions in the chat box at the white bottom of your screen. Um, depending on the number of questions, we will answer them right away or we will do it in a Q&A session at the end of the webinar. In case there are so many questions that we won't be able um, to manage all questions, we will make sure that you will receive a document with all the answers um, after the webinar. So um, Talento is hosting this webinar. We are an online assessment company and this year we exist for over 10 years. Um, maybe to um, give you a little introduction, uh, Ben Grieven, uh, of founder and CEO of Talento uh, will explain a little bit more about the future of a center, uh, assessments. Then Hilde Lemons, um, part of the Talento Academy and trainer, will um, tell you a little bit more about a remote assessment, the reason you all joined the webinar in the first place. And then we will um, end with Therese Koraman. Um, she is um, part of the human capital team of Kinepolis and she will explain you a little bit more about how she uses our remote assessments um, today within Kinepolis. And of course, we will end up with a round where you can post all your questions. Um, in case something is not clear or something, um, if you have a question or anything, I will follow the chat box um, and I will answer your questions right away. Okay, thank you. Then Ben, I suggest that you will continue um, with the presentation. Okay, thank you, Karen, for the introduction. Good morning to you all. I understand everybody is hearing us loud and clear, so I hope this stays the same and we don't get any technological difficulties. Um, I would like to start by giving you a little introduction on where we are today on the developments in HR tech and then move on slightly uh, fast towards what is the impact on that, what, what we call a remote assessment. If you look back a little bit, and a little bit is, is in the meantime already nine years, that was the first, what I would call, big evolution in HR tech. It started with some acquisitions on a high level, and it moved the first initiatives on automating the processes within the HR technology. Uh, it took a couple of years for those big players, and I'm talking about companies like SAP, IBM, and, uh, and Oracle, to get this process integrated. By, by 2014, we can see, or we could see, an explosion of smaller HR and HR tech companies setting up around the globe. Initially, a lot of them in Europe and the US, 
but later on this moved also to Asia and it became basically a global initiative or a global activity that you saw a lot of smaller HR tech companies that if we look back in hindsight, most of them were solving a specific particular problem, but they were not addressing the whole of the challenges in HR. So that left us with an enormous abundance of companies, but it also showed that those little small startups and some growing big needed to be interconnected. And between the period 2014 and where we are today, we're seeing an evolution towards an interconnectivity of those startups and companies. By 2019, we have reached the phase what I would call HR maturity. If you look at the Belgian and European landscape, when we made a map in 2016, 17 on how many HR technology companies were there around in the 2017, we ended up with something like 60. When we did this for Belgium in, let's say, 2019, we were already at 220 of those companies. And in the meantime, a lot of them had disappeared and a lot of new ones had replaced. We could say that HR tech was becoming mature and part of the mainstream, and it was now part for HR organizations and or HR managers to embrace that technology in their way of working. 2019 for me was also the period where we moved from um, the automation of HR processes to becoming automation of HR services. This is a completely new ball game. And what you should keep in mind there is that those processes would be addressed like, for instance, an Uber addressed the taxi problem. They looked at it from a completely different angle and started to process that. An, an example are companies that started earlier like Honeypot, Hired, one in, in Berlin, the other one in the US, that started to address the hiring process from a completely different angle. Of course, this whole thing got turned, I turned upside down by the introduction of COVID-19 uh, early the 2020s. I think we have a complete um, upheaval of what I would think the way we are doing HR and the way we're looking at HR tech. And although none of us have all the answers, because it's still very early days in what I would call the, the impact and the consequences of this global pandemic, we can still begin to see the first outlines. And to me, uh, 2020, when we will look back, will most likely in technology and HR will be known as the remote of everything. I think a lot of processes, a lot of activities will go remote that before we didn't even think about. Question is, wasn't it present then? Now it was because HR was already in disruption since 2011, but we already had video interviews. Companies like HireVue, uh, Cameo, they've been around for multiple years and all of them have worked out solutions to uh, improve pre-selection and to improve selection interviews, maybe even um, evaluation interviews. And you can already see lots of the large, what I would call assessment companies starting to introduce virtual assessments. If you look at the, let's call it the global leaders, they all have a solution on virtual assessments, where traditionally it is the assessment center that has been powered with technology. Has a lot changed? No, a lot hasn't changed. We just use technology in making that. Also AI solutions, we're already around. Uh, Talento itself invested quite heavily in a facial recognition company. Uh, trying to find a solution there, but there's been lots of AI initiatives predominantly on the, the hiring side, on the bot side, been available, but it's also been pulled through into uh, the combination of both. For instance, um, HireVue is using AI solutions in their video interviews and in the video assessments. And gamified assessments mean there are multiple companies that are introducing gamified assessments or gamified assessment, um, what I would call semi-solutions, to do parts of the assessment, gamify it, and then introduce it again to the traditional process. So it is not a new thing, it's been around, but we've never really, well, tried to change the way it works. We just looked for technology powered solutions. So what is going on if I look further? Until now, how did we treat remote working? Well, if you look on how we've been doing this now, most organizations, in my opinion, and if, if you read some of the publications, you will also find that most of the organizations went remote predominantly for cost reasons. Employees want remote 
mainly to create a better work-life balance. Everybody, mainly in every country, has a traffic problem or a congestion problem. Everybody has a, a need to have a more balanced way of integrating work and losing time in traffic and spending time going on. So these introductions of remote working were there, although it was never in a very structured manner. And you could say the leading organizations were usually the larger organizations, some IT companies, a lot of the IT work went remote. But if you look at the mainstream of organizations, they didn't go remote. Why not? Well, I think there are a number of reasons. Uh, some of them are, I think there is a lack of understanding on how to work with that, how to manage that, how to deal with people, how to deal with the social need of people, the interaction, uh, the communication. That's one thing. The second thing, I do think that a lot of organizations were worried about what the change would bring. And well, since the 2008, 2012 business was thriving again. So how would we have to deal with that if we didn't have to because we didn't have the space or the space was too expensive or traffic was playing a problem organizations preferred not to do it for that reason secondly we are typical creatures of routine if we are in a certain method of working we tend not to leave it until we are forced well what we are living today is such a moment of being forced i mean it wasn't me who invented it but when i've used it quite a lot in my in the past in my when I gave trainings and management sessions, um, there is a nice saying about Ma Tung. It's not the complete one, but he said that change will come through the barrel of a gun. Well, if we look at the current pandemic as a gun, then clearly we are much more prepared to embrace the change that before was present, but we didn't embrace it. Another reason is I think organizations are afraid of the lack of control they had in the remote work and the lack of understanding how performance would work and how people would integrate. I must say that I myself am now experiencing uh, much more remote working than I did that before. And although it works for quite a lot of things, it tends to be difficult for the more complex matters where you need that interpersonal interaction and there still is a challenge. So why is now the time then for remote assessment? Why is it now? And why did it never go through before? Well, if I think a little bit back, and, and I can go back quite a number of years because I, I do have some experience in the matter. When working in a, in a Swedish management company around the 2000s, I witnessed the period where we decided as an organization, do we go from the paper and pen test to what is called the computerized test? I remember quite a lengthy discussion and debate about how the results wouldn't be the same and we wouldn't be known whether we would be testing people computer literacy instead of their personality. There was quite a debate and it lasted at least for a year and a half, maybe two years. And it was not the company, it was the whole industry had that debate. There were loads of articles published on that. If you look a couple of years later, where we went from let's do assessments in the cloud, let's do to online, there was already quite fewer discussion about that. People didn't really bother. And if you now see people are making assessments on smartphones, they're making them in the train, they're making them in an airport, we're doing assessments everywhere. I think the time is right for the next step, for the next step where you can ask yourself, do we need to put two people in the room to do the assessment? So I think where we are at the moment is we have a presence of technology. We just have a critical situation that functions as a catalyst that well, more or less forces us to think of other solutions to continue to keep our business processes flowing. So I think that is the big change now. And I wouldn't be surprised if we have a lot of um, very realistic and very uh, deep going changes in our HR processes over the next six to 18 months. So what do I see coming next? What do I see coming after we are in this period. A, of course, in my opinion, remote assessments will make a, a very fierce introduction. But we will see lots of HR solutions merge. Um, next to Talent, I'm also a founding member of HR Tech Valley. And I already keep hearing, get hearing signals that some of the HR Tech startups are in difficulty. Let's face it, lots of organizations are in difficulty. But in quite, to be honest, I think some of them were maybe more feature oriented 
than that they were company oriented. And I think this crisis will also push organizations to cooperate and to work together and to work into a way that their joint offering becomes a company and less, and less of a feature. I think that's the first thing we will see, mergers, consolidations around the board. Second, I think all these technologies will be optimized for remote work. Let's, let's all be honest, I've been using all the technologies over the last six weeks, going from Zoom, whereby Teams, Hangouts, you can't name it, this, this presenting tool, every of those tools has the same problem. They're not really user friendly, are they? They, they work and they work okay. But if you look at the amount of time you need to spend, if you do anything out of the standard, it's too complicated. So it needs to be optimized for this remote work. It needs to be able to tap in, tap out, switch, switch between your mobile and your tablet. It needs to become more fluent. So that will definitely happen. I will see HR being catapulted in this new world of work. Um, I've been giving talks about it for the last 18 months. But I think we will now see a rapid change. Why? Because it's become clear to everybody. We need to find another way of working together. We need another way of getting those talents together, joint working over different ways, or we will lose even more than the pandemic has cost us. We will most definitely start to work hybrid. Uh, what I mean with hybrid, we will, most of us will work and remote and on fixed location or at the office. I think there will be a change and it will become the new normal working hybrid. I think our professional behavior will change. I think the way we work and the way we interact with our employers and the way where people interact with each other will change completely. It will take some more time. It will take at least two years. Next to that, I think we will have to find new ways how we measure effectiveness. Because let's face it, Although we are now forced to do this, I am absolutely sure that some employers are asking themselves like, how effective is this? How do I measure if people are living up to their job and not living up to their job? And some jobs are easier, some functions are easier organized remote than others are. So if I move on now after giving a brief introduction on the, uh, what I see the changes following uh, this global pandemic, it's time to focus on the, uh, on the remote assessment itself. So what do we see as a remote assessment to be absolutely clear that we don't mistake uh, or that we're not talking about different things? To us, a remote assessment is a qualified analysis and matching of personality, cognitive and behavioral data, of course, measured by Talento assessments with functional, cultural and competence requirements by a trained expert. However, without the need of a face-to-face -face meeting or assessment interview. I imagine that there might be some questions. Please, if you have those, bring them to the, um, to the, um, the talk. Karen will definitely bring them forward. How did we start with this? Uh, I'll do it briefly and not waste, not spend too much time on it. We started in 2013 when we started to get the first question of our clients who took our e-assessments and said, listen, uh, we think we know what it is, but we would like to have a second opinion. Or our manager would like to hear it from a professional. Um, or we got a question saying, listen, um, could, could we have some more information that resembles more to an assessment, but we don't want to pay the fee that is normally needed for an assessment? It took us some time, uh, but about a year later, we introduced something that we now call the expert review. Uh, Hilda will explain you later what the expert review is and how it works, but it took us about a year to get there. And originally we did that on one of our assessment reports, basically the PERFORM report, we gave a detailed report on that. By 2016, we had delivered quite a lot of them. I think we were at that time something around 1,000 of those expert reviews developed, delivered. And we had developed a method on how to approach that because we were beginning to see that this could land to something that would be growing and that we needed more, well, let's say experts who could do that. Therefore, in 2018, we started to train a team of experts, international team of experts, I might say. We have in the meantime trained people in Poland, in Czech and Slovakia, uh, Italy, all the way to Portugal. So I think currently we have something like in the beginning of the 20s people who are experts in writing these expert reviews. By 2020, we already 
planned to launch the expert review basically all over Europe, only this pandemic resulted in us like broadening up our offer and making it more of a remote assessment. I'll explain later what I mean. What I would like to do is to give you a little bit of an overview. How does a remote assessment compare to an assessment? Basically, if you put those two things together up opposite each other, I would call the one the analog assessment as analog. It's basically non-technology driven and working with a face-to-face -face meeting. If you take that, then basically you always have some sort of assessment. And by the way, when I talk about an assessment, I'm for the, the sake of the argument, I'm talking about an assessment with a test, an interview based on either experience, behavior, or competency, but not an assessment center, assessment center, not necessarily with role play or in baskets or exercises, just a standard assessment. Both of them need a test and reports. But if you go to an assessment, then you need to start to make meetings with candidates. You need to connect with people. And we all know that that is quite a difficult talk to get hold of people these days and to book meetings. Once you manage that, you move to the meeting, then you perform your assessment, you write the report, and basically about two weeks later, you end up with an assessment report. I think if I look on average, that is even speedier. Usually, if I talk to customers, it takes anything between, well, a week and a half and three weeks. If you look at remote assessment, then where's the difference? Well, within our platform, we had triggered the minute a candidate, an applicant, an employee gets invited to a remote assessment. They gets a digital trigger, and that trigger is sent to the responding consultant who needs to develop the expert review. The second trigger is sent the minute the candidate or the participant has completed the test and the report is available. So those tools are then pushed into the mailbox of our assessors together with the information of the customer, and a report is delivered within a guaranteed period of 48 hours. Uh, we later have a client, and I, if I looked at the attendancy list, we have some clients present in the audience. I think we managed to reach that in about 80, 89, or 98 or 99 percent of the cases. There is this odd case where we don't match, but usually within 48 business hours, we deliver the remote assessment. So if you compare that, those two, and just put the numbers together, one is driven completely online, delivered within 48 hours hours and I'll add the price. That is what the remote handling of the assessment costs. The other takes about two weeks, requires a face-to-face -face meeting, and in general is more than a thousand euros. If you look at the flow, and this is where I will end and hand over to Hilda, there are five steps in it. Basically, the client submit data in our platform. We take care of inviting candidates for the required tests. The reports are automatically generated within the platform. And remember, the triggers are sent automatically to the attached consultant, who then writes the report, creates everything, and delivers the report either direct in the mailbox or online in the account of the customer. That is how the process works. In general, uh, the longest period invested is the time between submitting the data and basically being ready to invite the candidate. From that moment on, it takes about 48 hours that we have the data, nothing more. So how does this now work in detail? And this is the moment, I think, Karen, where you need to introduce another speaker, because this is the time where Hilda will take you through the fact how it runs in detail. I will come back later and explain you a little more how the future works. Perfect. There are already um, some questions that we received. Uh, maybe we can handle them, depending on how big the volume is. Um, not so big, but they are quite general. So maybe we can handle those questions at the end of the webinar because okay. I think also Hilde and Therese might be interested in answering those. Okay. Um, I will leave it to you. And um, then I will um, add Hilde as a speaker. Um, so Hilde is activated at this moment. Um, Hilde is also the founder of our Talento Academy, and she's also um, the trainer that is responsible um, to train all the um, certified assessors that are writing expert reviews um, at this moment. So I will let Hilde explain you more about her expertise. Hilde, it's up to you. 
I'm not hearing Hilda. Okay, do you hear me now? Yes, perfect Hilda. Thank okay. you. Okay, good morning everyone. I will try to uh, give you a brief overview on how we as the, uh, like we call ourselves, the expert review assessors go through the process to deliver the report, like Ben just said, uh, to the customer. And I see already some questions on that, but we will go come back to them and maybe I will give my answer in between. So if we look at the actual process, we see that we as the assessor get some information uh, from the platform. Uh, what do we get? We get the uh, reports that are necessary, that can be that will be the personality and motivation questionnaire, uh, the results of that. We will also get, if, uh, if presented, the cognitive testing and motivation uh, requirements. And we combine that with you also a function description if the customer wants to give us a function description. So we have some more uh, information. And we also give in the platform the possibility to the customer to give some requirements, meaning, uh, look, uh, can you look if this one is very good in, uh, if you have a sales pro uh, in, in hunting or more in farming. So you have the possibility as a customer to give some more insight. If needed, we also do a video interview or a call uh, with the customer to really know what are you looking for. Then we start with the analysis of the profile, and I will come back to that process later. And then we deliver the copy of the report to the customer. And I saw someone said, who is going to get the report? That is up to the customer because we also um, have a, an, an, a possibility to give feedback. And I think our customer, Therese from Kitty Polis, will give some information on that, how we do that uh, in practice. Uh, how we give the feedback to the customer or even to the uh, to the candidate because we see that they also often want to have some more feedback. So if we go to the profile analysis, how do we uh, look at that? Uh, like I said, we start with all the data uh, that we get, the for all the reports, the profile and so on. And we start looking at what we call the key data. Does the uh, candidate uh, answer the questions in a consistent way? Uh, what is their tendency? Do they have a high or low tendency? And how many time did they spend to fill in the questionnaire? Why is that important? Because we also want the scientific uh, background of Talento. It's important to know that if a custom, uh, candidate filled in the questionnaire, if they did it in the, in the right way, and if we, as an analyzer of the profile, need to have some, I call it uh, red lights, uh, if someone not uh, answered consistently or took too, too long time to fill it in, this will be for us a little red light to, uh, to take with us when we interpret the profile. Within um, Talento, we have four behavioral clusters and we look at all the clusters in a short overview and then we start analyzing every cluster one by one. What do we do? We look at those indicators within the clusters that are very specific. I like to call it unique for this candidate. And we are looking what are the high and low indicators. So what really triggers this, uh, this candidate? We always uh, want to analyze it in a way where we focus on what should the behavior be? Uh, what do we think that someone would uh, perform in a certain way of uh, uh, starting from uh, excuse me, starting from his personality and his motivation so that is how we are going to analyze it and we go a little bit further we not only look at the indicators but we also look at all the links within within the cluster yeah. uh, or within the indicators then we uh, if we have 244 clusters, we took uh, we look at the relationships between the clusters because we are talking about one person and uh, we want to know everything about them uh, to have a holistic overview. And we make a difference between intrapersonal and interpersonal. I try to explain that a little bit. Intrapersonal are how, what is the way he is working? How does he uh, manage information? How does he take decisions? So we are looking at that. And then we look at the interpersonal indicators, meaning for us, how is someone coping within a team? 
within an organization, uh, what kind of environment is the most uh, preferable for him. So we try to look at everything uh, on that. And according to that, we make our conclusion and we can tell about this candidate. This is someone who will act in this way. He needs some structure. He doesn't like structure. He is really a team player or he's someone who will not always be, uh, be aware of what is going on in the organization. So we can give quite a lot of information out of that. If we have that uh, in our conclusion, we, view all, we verify also the motivators and that we find in the motivator report of Talento, where we look, is this correct? Did we see it correctly? And we also look if available to the cognitive results, because uh, if we have someone who has a very high or very low score on those results, we can add something extra in our uh, conclusion. After that, we go back to our um, the, the, to the matching the, and the requirements that uh, the customer asks from us and we can make with some indications we can say maybe this is someone uh, you need someone who work in a team i think this could be a team player we will we will be a little bit uh, prudent not to give uh, not to really make a statement but we want to give some very good um uh, how do you call that very good um presentation about how we think this candidate would function in a certain way. Mm -hmm. um, I think that is the most important and that is what we want to want to explain in our interview, uh, in our expert review, where we uh, try to, uh, to give the most feedback as possible. And maybe now it's the moment to listen to uh, Therese Gorman. She is a corporate HR business partner with Kinipolis, and she has some experience in uh, working with our expert reviews. So, Karen, maybe you can switch to Therese. So maybe I'll uh, leave you on the speaker's panel for a second because there was a question that I received that is specific um, for your part. Um, it's Carolina, and she's asking you, how do you evaluate um, the motivators um, yes, uh, not to go too much into depth into uh, the technical uh, way of the reporting. Uh, I always used, we have uh, different reports. We have a perform report, but we also have a motivate report within Talento that we as an, uh, a remote assessor can use um, and where we can sp specify uh, what really triggers people. Uh, to give an example, if someone has a very high score on social needs, that might uh, mean that he needs to be within uh, with other people. So in this situation, with all the COVID-19, uh, where we have to work apart, it could be uh, that is, it could be a problem for his motivation. I don't know if this is the answer to the question, but we, we are really thinking a little bit further that if you see this in a profile, what could it mean for someone's motivation or demotivation? And we try to give that in the conclusion so people can really use it when someone starts. And if we have someone needing a lot of uh, people around them, we can say, be careful, be aware that in this situation where you can't come at the office and there's no social interaction, this could have an impact on the results, on the performance of this uh, employee. Mm -hmm. Indeed. I hope, Carolina, that was an answer to your question. Um, I also remember the example, um, if there is a person that needs um, a lot of confirmation, for example, and he ends, up, uh, he ends up in a team with a manager that isn't giving a lot of constructive feedback, this might be very um, demotivating. So he might function very well in another team or maybe in another company where there is more culture about um, feedback, for example. Um, that's also something I remember. Um, there is another question. Um, Okay, that's maybe also a question that I'd like to answer at this moment. Um, there was somebody asking if the final report delivered is automatically generated by the Talento tests tools and the input of the profile evaluation by a specialist. 
So um, the Talento Cloud is generating multiple reports. We consider them being standard reports about performance, motivation, a big five profile. Um, but the expert review Hilda was talking about is actually um, a written report. It is a non-computer generated report um, that includes um, an analysis of a specialist. Um, so I think that was an answer to your question that we're talking about two separate things, but we also have some standard reports. Um, that is correct. Yes, yes. It's not general. It's what I try to explain. We don't generate it automatically. We always look at the report and write what we see in the report for everyone specific, uh, and we interpret the profile with every indicator we can find there. Okay, thank you, Hilde. I will move on to um, Therese's part. That way, we will have a lot of time at the end of the session for the Q and A session. Um, so Hilde will be muted again, and I will activate uh, Therese at this very moment. Um, so Therese, you should be able to take the word. Good morning or good afternoon, everybody. Uh, how are you all doing? Uh, it's quite exciting for me. It's the first time that I'm hosting a webinar, but um, I've been working with Talento since a couple of years now. So I think I'm quite able to tell you a bit how our experience is uh, with working with them. First of all, I would like to welcome all of you. Uh, and uh, it's very interesting that it's such an international audience from Poland to Portugal to France. Um, hopefully each and every one of you is safe and sound. And um, I'm going to start with a short introduction of myself and of Kinepolis. And then I'll go on to the, the story of uh, Talento and Kinepolis. If there are any questions, just fire away. Uh, Karen will be able to um, look into them and see if we can answer them straight away or afterwards. So as said, my name is uh, Therese Koerman. I've been working for Kinepolis, which is an international cinema group. Um, we are in the Benelux in um, France, the Netherlands, Spain. Uh, we have one in Poland. And we, in the last few years, we also uh, took over some, acquired some cinemas in Canada and the US. Um, I work in the human capital department together with uh, two other colleagues, our human capital director and our learning and development expert. Um, we work on three major pillars, uh, which are attracting the talent. Um, detecting them in our company and developing them. I am personally also, I have a fourth one, I would like to retain the talents that we um, took in our company. So I'm more um, responsible for the recruitment, which also of course uh, involves uh, everything about the testing and seeing the candidates. Um, so we are a very small team only three people. Uh, we work very closely together and um, we know very well uh, the responsibilities of uh, each and every one of us. Um, about Kinepolis, uh, Kinepolis is a family owned business uh, listed on the stock market, started in the 60s with the first small cinema in uh, Belgium. But now we have grown tremendously, as I said, all the countries we're now working in. So I saw some questions about all the different languages. There are, uh, um, I don't know how many, I don't know how many Karen, Karen said, more than 20 different languages, um, all professionally, all uh, very well supported in the different languages. Um, so what I wanted to say is um, we're in the cinema theaters. We're not only about movies and popcorn, we also do, um, we have our own screen advertising company. We do in real estate and I'm not going to give you all the information. The most important is what you want to know is the story between uh, Kinepolis and Talento. I think about seven or eight years ago, our human capital director 
um, had a huge challenge, is two challenges to start uh, a new website, job site, and also to find a new, um, what do you say, supplier for online assessments. Because at that time, we were already convinced that online assessments were really necessary for candidates. Um, I think already seven, eight years ago, we were feeling that candidates would come for an interview, but not to do, to stay a whole day to do an assessment. Um, they were always very surprised when we could offer it online. Um, so we des decided to go for Talento. Why? I think one of the main reasons was, of course, the connection we had, because it's a, it's still, I think, a small company where you know the people working there. Um, for us, it's a small company. Of course, I have most of the connection with Hilde, um, the expert in everything about the reviews. I am not a psychologist, but her support in um, in all those online assessments is just um, really nice. So we work really well together. Why did we also decide for Talento uh, was the international tooling at that time already. All the languages were available that we needed. Um, and we were convinced that pen and paper, like Ben said before, already at that time, we were convinced that it was old school. So, um, so now we implemented, uh, since then we implemented Talento in uh, all our countries in Europe. Um, in all the different languages, and they are used by our HR managers and our HR business partners. Um, everything that concerns uh, the managers, we we don't give them um, access to the tool, but we take them further on to analyze the tests, to do the expert reviews, to create written expert reviews together with Hilde. And, um, but for the moment, the only ones who have access to the tool are the, the people who uh, are in direct connection with the candidates. Um, so Talento asked me to give also some feedback about the expert reviews. So in our selection process, the invites for the online e-assessments are sent to our final candidates. Let's say that we have um, 10 candidates in total and we have two final candidates. We will send an online assessment by mail, invite the, um, the candidates for the online assessment. I always personally, and I think each of our HR people call the candidates to explain um, that they should uh, be in a room where they're uh, have no noise, no children, where they are at ease, where can, they can fill out the tests, explain a bit um, the content of the tests and, and give them a time frame. You know, we can choose the time frame from three days to six days to two weeks, uh, which is also very easy. Um, what I think is also important to say for me, the interview is still the most important one. So the face-to-face -face interview together with the manager and the candidate, but the for each candidate, we will, final candidate, we will use Talento to um, most of the time get a confirmation of all the skills and the personality we have seen during the interview. Um, we could not imagine working without the e-assessments anymore. Let's say if they would tell us, you have to invite the candidate again to do an assessment. No. Uh, so uh, we're totally convinced of how Talento works. Um, so as Hilde explained, um, we then get, uh, once the candidate filled out uh, the assessment, we automatically get a mail where we see all the tests where we invited them in and the, we can download them very easily. And then um, uh, we, how do you say, make a short analysis of uh, possible um, 
red flags or things that you say, oh, I saw that in the in the interview, um, the skills, um, the personality. Um, and then I will send those tests to the manager. We will sit down together and um, decide if we want an expert review. For, um, an expert review uh, is important to know is in fact a written um, letter, a written review, where Hilde will um, how do you say, translate all the tests into comprehensive language, because I'm not a psychologist, they are the psychologists. So um, it helps myself and the manager to get those written expert reviews. Um, once um, we receive them, what I ask to the manager, if they would like to um, um, run through the review together with Hilda. And we do it in most of the time. So we arrange a call. The call doesn't have to take an hour. It takes 10 minutes. And we can discuss and run through the whole report and uh, see where the manager still has questions, um, not only to choose the candidate, but also for a later stage. Once the candidate starts with us, there are also points we can um, see, OK, this is a, a thing we can work on with the candidate. candidate. This is a, a talent where it can still be developed in. So it helps in not only the selection of the candidate, but also in a further stage. Um, so I'm thinking if I uh, said... Uh, maybe, maybe there is also a question that somebody dropped for you. Um, it uh, is a question about how many candidates you test this way per year. And oh what my God. <laughs> how many candidates? Um, I, I have to look at the figures because we're international. So um, I think um, if I'm talking about the corporate, um, where we are about in total uh, 130, 140 people, how many candidates would we test? Um, about 50, 60 maybe? Um, let's also say that at the corporate kinepolis group, we don't have, um, how do you say that in English? Um, um, the talent talents don't easily go away. So it's not um, that we're all the time looking for a lot of people. Mm. They, uh, we have a quite high retention rate. Is that the right yeah. word, Ben? That's uh, the right word. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so what is the re ah, retention rate out of this group? Well, I can say that uh, last year, from all the candidates that we hired, that I hired, I mean, the corporate level, um, two candidates out of the 40 of, or 50 um, left the company, but not um, for other reasons. One was going on an international job and uh, another person was taking um, a job close to home. So, um, but there is an addition. There is also um, a question for a little um, validity check. Um, if you find confirmation of the candidate's strengths in real life or on the job, probably too. Yes. Yes. Um, yeah. Um, I must say it's. Uh, I forgot to mention that once the candidate starts, what we also do um, is in the first month or two months, we try to sit down together with the candidate, we as HR or uh, the manager, um, to run through the tests. Because it's always interesting, the candidate wants to see what got out of those tests and are there things where I can see myself uh oh yes it's true i'm this kind of person or i need some more support in this or in that um so um yeah um and uh let's say the last the last candidate um to whom i ran through the tests was um a finance person a pro process manager 
-hmm. And um, she 100% recognized herself in the tests. So mm -hmm. it's, uh, that's yeah. Good. That's nice to hear. Of course, that's the purpose. Um, mm -hmm. Also, maybe want to remind the audience that you don't have to be a psychologist, of course, to be able to interpret the results. Um, because we also train people how to read um, the reports um, if that is required. Um, so that might be important to know um, for the ones that are not a psychologist and are interested in, uh, in reading the reports and all the results. Yeah. Kevin, maybe to add to this validity, if I may just pitch in one thing. Um, mm -hmm. Over the past six years where we've worked and delivered something like close to 5,000 of these expert review slash remote assessments, mm -hmm. we have, of course, tracked the um, on-the-job performance with A, the assessment, and B, the expert review. And the one thing we see coming back is a lot of what, what Teresa just gave. There is a, quite a lot of high retention rate in the people that are going through the process. Uh, that is one thing. You can see that from the actual data. But the also the interesting thing is that, like in Apollos, we have a number, quite a number of customers who keep on using the expert review over a longer period. And as they keep on using it over a longer period, you can see the conclusion that those people, A, feel comfortable with it, B, the participant, employee, or candidate feel comfortable, feels comfortable with it. But it also proves that the findings in the assessment do match the actual performance in the role. And I think there is the, the biggest validity. Of, of course, uh, this will uh, gradually uh, evolve over the years um, as people stay longer and organizations change. But there is quite a high validity on the results of that. Um, yes, but, but I also wanted to add, we also use it in the evaluation. So in the performance, um, once a year, um, our really official performance uh, cycle where you can also use those uh, reviews and can see where where do they still need training, where they can still develop. Um, and I must say that I work a lot with Hilde and Karen, and mainly with Hilde, uh, um, that she's always really available. I would also like to see Hilde here because um, uh, we've been working together since such a long time that um, um, it's it's really nice to work and also the support and the help desk is really very professional. So I think we can also give some compliments to Talento um, for uh, good work and expertise. So um, I see that um, Ivona um, asked if we also use it for managerial positions. Yes, we do. Um, if we really, but if we really go to the C level, CEO, CFO, then we would go to a real professional um, e assessment. But that's then really for a few days. Uh, mm -hmm. But uh, we use the interview, we use the the talento, and then next to it uh, an extra um, face to face assessment. Mm -hmm. So you mean we will add a business case or role play yes. at the final stage? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, I try to keep track on the time. Um, there is no time limit for the webinar, but we planned um, to give a session about one hour. Um, so that means we um, also uh, almost um, want to end um, the, the session. So maybe, Ben, I will give back the word to you in case you want to make any uh, additional okay. Um, conclusions and then we have also three questions left that might be interesting um, to, to at the end. Uh, Karen, I'll take I'll take back over and try to keep it in the time frame. Um, okay. Next, maybe an interesting thing Teresa touched on that Hilda also is is where do you apply now the the remote assessment? Where do you apply the expert reviews we've been using it or calling it for the last five years? Um, a, a lot of application we see in the pre-selection, like we have some three or four candidates, how do we filter out of that the final candidate? And you can see that in various sectors. Uh, a sector that jumps to mind for me and is very uh, in the news today is we do have quite some um, hospitals in Belgium who use that. And over the past years, we quite a number of times done that in merges where hospitals are merging together and we've looked at who is now the best fit for certain departments. Of course, the final candidates, um, as there is mentioned, reviews, but also promotions. 
We've seen promotions uh, in various types of organizations that you use for that. Very frequent, of course, is the getting the second opinion where the internal HR department or the manager has their view, has their conclusion, has some doubts, and wants the expert's opinion to analyze and then write a report on some details. Recently, we've seen, com uh, we've seen clients use it as an employer branding, which was until two years ago not the case. And what do I mean with employer branding? We do know of customers who have an expert report written and then give it to an applicant candidate, even if that candidate is not retained in the process. So basically rewarding, or I would like to call it rewarding a candidate for participating in this recruitment process. I think this is a very um, smart and intelligent way of approaching it because do remember, you, we are putting as organizations people to a recruitment process. Usually they get not a lot. In this case, if you give them a feedback, I'm definitely sure that the Google rules will apply. They will talk to at least 11 people about that, and it will help your branding. It's a very interesting approach. Uh, we've had some requests on team guide, on development of team uh, teams and individuals. So I will talk a little bit more about that in the next slides, uh, but there's definitely improvement in there. So where's the added value? I, My opinion, I think the remote assessment is always objective. It might sound strange, but taking the face-to-face -face meeting of people out there, arriving late on a meeting or getting disturbed or whatever it is in a meeting, that's taken out. There is focus because there is no distraction. And definitely there is speed. And most certainly, if you can deliver something like that within a couple of days, it's efficiency. How does the future look? Where are we working on? Because as you remember, I, I talked about in the beginning, we had an expert review. Now we've extended that to basically um, our customers, Talento customers who uh, buy our online assessments can basically online use the expert review within our platform. But we're now, as the beginning of May, opening this up to non-Talento customers who can order that remote assessment to a online landing page. They can order it. They can just go the flow and handle that. That is one of the changes. Next, you will see we will integrate a planning tool. We're in the middle of that integration, meaning that if remote interviews, if video interviews are required, we can use that automatic planning. Uh, you will find out more about that. I'm in the middle of finalizing that. Um, we have already uh, try it, and I think the customer whom we did the first for is also in this um, in this session. We've already made the first team views, meaning write an expert review on a group of people. That is news for a whole new session, but you can see that we can then look at the dynamics of, for instance, a management team in a, I remember, I'm not gonna use names here, of a Belgian radio station, where we did that for a new management team. Um, but we recently done it also for technological teams. And we're in the middle of the process of adding development recommendations to the expert review, which is, of course, a new extension. So to sum it up, why would you use a remote assessment? Well, I have three principal reasons. A, it is proven its validity. Over the last six years, we've delivered more than 5,000. And I might say, I do not know that we have lost any customers who told us that they are not finding our findings to be correct or to be spot on to where they need it or to be detailed enough. That is one thing. And over 5,000 over the last six years, this is quite a number, I can assure you. It is definitely faster as anything that you can find in an assessment. I remember going to one of the energy company assessors and they told me, well, an assessment takes us about three weeks. Not only consider the time invested for the assessor having to do with it, but imagine if you have your employees, you need to send them out house to make an assessment, to go there, to do the interview, Think about the time loss, the costs involved in that. And last but not least, it is most definitely cheaper. I mean, giving out an, a remote assessment will take you something around 300, 325 euros. If you have to go for a standard assessment, I don't want to exaggerate here, but um, if I look at the international market and I've done the comparison, we will be talking something between 900 to 2,500 euros for an assessment. Is it equally as good? Does it mean we don't believe in the interview? No, there is room for an interview. And there is, of course, added value for an interview. My question is, do you need in every instance to do a full, full blown assessment or assessment center? I think there is room to integrate remote assessments to a large group of people and therefore providing more people with the right insight on their performance and their capabilities. 
So in brief, that was one hour and 40 seconds. That was pretty close. Um, I think this is the time, Karen, when you take over and we can handle yeah. some more questions and answers. I will publish some questions. There aren't a lot of unanswered questions. I think the first one um, is also for you, Ben, so I will publish it right away. Yeah, I'm not, so if you please read it out, because somehow I'm not in the yeah. mode to see it. Okay, the rest should see the question, but what is included in the remote assessment? Well, that's a good one. Um, a, um, the first thing you have included is, basically you send us the information, the, the, the requirements, we get that. We invite the candidate, so we handle that. The, the handling of the candidate is done. Uh, candidate gets invited to basically our personality testing and all the required cognitive tests. And we have all the flow over the Talento reports, meaning uh, the, the what I would call the standard, but don't take standard as any negative. Uh, it's very complete, uh, perform on 30 behavioral indicators. It would be a managed report if it's a manager. It would be a sales report if it's a salesperson. Of course, the, the motivation report is in there. And of course, all the cognitive tests. That is the data set available. And yes, the customer gets those reports too. Then our assessor, our selected assessor goes to work. What does that mean? If it is somebody now who is um, requesting an, a remote assessment in, in, in Krakow or in Lisbon, then our tool automatically knows that one of our trained certified assessors in Portugal will be attached to that Portuguese customer. He or she will write that written individual unique report. I cannot stress this enough. This is not a tool where we will harvest expressions and dates from a database and then compile a report. No, 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 no. This is every time again, a uniquely written report. That report gets written, it gets value checked on the language, and then it is either uploaded within the Talento platform or it is sent to the customer if that customer is not a Talento platform customer. So basically that's what you get. Um, there will be, there is not included in that standard price, it's not included a verbal feedback, but that can be arranged and we, we have a price setting for that that is not enormous should individual feedback be necessary, that is included. Maybe the next question um, can be added to this one. Um, it is the question, do you um, do tracking and keep in digital touch with candidates? Uh, that's a good question. Do we keep tracking? A, the Talento tool keeps in, keep in tracking. We track the candidate throughout the process that is with us. Do we later keep on tracking with the candidate? No. Uh, frankly, we don't, A, we're not allowed, and B, I don't want to say we don't care, but we perform a service for our customers. To perform that service, of course, we will keep track because if a candidate gets three days to complete a test and he hasn't completed within two and a half days, we will prompt him and basically push him and say, this needs to go on. If the client told us like, hey, you need to give feedback to that candidate, of course, we will fix that feedback meeting. Hence the new uh, planning tool we're integrating to book that planning meeting and to make sure we have that. So um, no, if it is for purposes than delivering our service, it's not the right Within uh, I think the sound okay. Um, I will add Hilde again to the conversation. Um, I think I have two questions that can be best answered by her. Hilde, I will unlock you, and I will also publish a question. Um, it's a question from Carolina. I don't know if you can read the question, Hilde. I'm, I'm reading it. Uh, no, they are not included, like Ben said. Uh, we, only, we only have the, the, uh, the reports of the testings, and that's where we, we find it. But like Ben also said, what we also do is for some uh, clients add then an interview, we will find an assessor who is uh, able to do uh, also face-to-face -face interviewing and role playings and group exercise if needed. And that's what we already told. Uh, sometimes, and especially in uh, hospitals, we have a lot of candidates fill in talent or have the expert review. And then the latest candidate will also have an interview or an assessment center with role plays and group exercises if necessary. If I can add to that for Hilda, um, in its nature and its basic, um, Talento is not 
a what I would call a standard consultancy assessment company. We have no ambition to become that. We do have an ambition to have a large group of expert uh, review assessors. Uh, quite a lot of them are employed uh, either directly with our partners in various countries or are appointed by Talento and trained and are part of Talento, uh, what we call now HR Plaza. If you look up our site, you will see that we're quite boosting on that. What we are trying to do and what we have done to some extent already is to certify assessors that we can um, well recommend to perform assessments on top of the Talento uh, online assessments and online reviews. As Hilda mentioned, uh, some of our clients request that some of candidates that we've written an expert review on to later see them then in an assessment center. We do that, though we tend to prefer to give that to our partners. That, of course, we want to certify also. We need to keep that degree of quality. So we definitely are looking into expanding that in various countries. Okay. Maybe another question uh, that might also be answered by Hilde. Um... Yes, we do. We, uh, it's like we said, if we have the requirements and we get the uh, we get the answer to look for a development center, we will not look purely on uh, does someone fit in a certain job, but where are the developments? And like Ben said, we will uh, in the future, uh, we now give some advice on that uh, or in the expert preview or in the call afterwards but we will uh, also develop something to make it in, in a more official way but of course if you look to someone for a development assessment you give some advice to the customer how they could develop the best so i will take that into the conclusion maybe to add to hilda's um, explanation talento has already and we've released it for i think three customers now uh, we've already developed a recommendation suite that is automatically attached to our competency assessment, meaning we can assess the competencies of a candidate in any organization and aligned to that automatically we can generate development recommendations. This is, and I stress this, this is automated. That automated recommendation will then in the future will be the basis of the individual, individual written basis uh, in an expert review. So we are already there. It's been released last year, I think, uh, September, October. Mm -hmm. We're still in the middle of finalizing that and you will appreciate that. It's one thing to have a competency framework of 52 competencies in, in something like 12 languages. It is quite a job to also bring the recommendations at the same level of quality we would like to have. But most likely over the next months, you will see this gradually be integrated into our expert reviews. Okay, I have three questions um, left. I will start with the last uh, question that came in. It's a question from Agnita. How can I become a Talento consultant? Um, okay. Um, you can That's a simple just... one. Send us an email, Anita. Yeah. <laughs> Send us an email and we will get back in touch with you and bring you in connection with our Polish partner or you can reach out to us and we will connect you immediately. No problem. Okay. Thank you. Then there are two questions um, that are not um, directly related to the remote assessment, but I will certainly publish them. Um, the first question is from Emilian. Do you think that more psychologists are needed on board to cope with remote work, isolation problems of employees? In addition to that question, there is also a stress-related question. Um, if we have a tool that can help them find out how to support their employees, um, in case they do not report direct stress symptoms uh, to the HR department. Uh, maybe I can come to that. Uh, if we look at the Talento uh, reports or the Talento questionnaires, we can see how we can motivate people and also where people uh, with isolation problems, like I gave the explanation, would have some problems or not. Not everyone will uh, will have the, that problems, but we can generate that from our uh, Talento testing and give some more information. For this one, you need to be careful. Uh, I don't say everyone needs to go to a psychologist there, but you can track who is more uh, stressed or who is more um, with who has a problem 
in this way of working and how can we as an employer help them to uh, to cope with it Karen if I understood your question right uh, was the question more oriented than I apologize for not being able to read them was the question right like um, is the current situation increasing the need for psychologists in this new way of working yeah um, yeah it's mainly the question I, I think yeah, and I think I'm definitely, if you follow the literature and if you follow what I'm uh, quoting. And your sound is being interrupted constantly. I don't know if other people have this experience, but. Yes, I have it also. Yeah. I think it's okay. too much. I can't do anything about it because if I now switch off, I think I will lose connection. No, no, it's okay. So, no, it's okay. Okay. Right? okay. Um, what I was trying to say is that. Um, uh, yes, I do think that the current situation will increase uh, the need for more psychologists. Uh, I think all those new psychologists will also have to go back to studying on how this situation handles with people, because let's be honest, we've never been there. The last pandemic uh, was in 1918. Uh, that was a period where uh, I just recently saw a publication. We had no global technology we had no mobile technology we had no video technology i think we need to learn how this will impact people and i do think that over the years to come and most definitely the next three three to four years there will be an increased need of people um being interested in taking care of people in this new situation yes most definitely okay then the last question unless i'm mistaken um how do you plan to bring some teamwork for candidates without face-to-face -face contact? Um, I don't know if that's specifically a question for Talento of this part, um, but if anyone wants to answer this one as well. How to bring teamwork without a face-to-face -face contact? Is that the question? Um, how do you plan to bring some teamwork for candidates without face-to-face -face contact indeed? Yeah, that, that is not an easy one. I think that is a, a steep new learning curve. Uh, I must say I've been experiencing myself with some remote IT teams. And I think mo most functions where you have a factual and planned transaction uh, that require daily updates and daily fine tuning and you can share your work progress, it works. Uh, I myself am struggling how that would have to work in a more um people and customer oriented uh, or relationship oriented functions that is going to be a challenge i don't have the answer yet i think we will have to find new ways and new technologies to try to find answers to that hilda i don't know if you have a view i i, I agree with you uh we, it's 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 a big question and we have to uh to look at that uh, and for everyone again it will be uh, different uh, looking i already saw a lot of uh, personality and motivation profiles and now i can think of someone saying okay for this one it should be in this way for this one it would should be in that way should we uh, vary for every individual uh, individual uh, apart i don't i don't think so but i think also our team views that talento presents might give uh, an answer on who of, uh, who of your teams uh, can integrate and who can work better um, without face-to-face -face contact. How can we help people to work in a better way without those contacts? Yeah, I think it's an, it's an interesting situation because when we, ever since we started Talento 10 years ago, we very often get the question like, does personality change? And the answer is always the same if you talk to psychologists, Personality is a relative constant, and it only changes when people are faced with traumatic, traumatic events. Well, I've been hearing that for the past 20 to 25 years, but if I look at this now, we can safely say that this pandemic is a collective traumatic event. So will it change behaviors? Will it change personalities? I don't want to give the answer, but I think we're going to, we're embarking on a very interesting time because I'm definitely, we will see some changes. The question is, what will they be? So I am quite interested to compare the data we have now with the data we will collect in the future and see if there are some changes. But to give the answer today, there will be change. Yes. What will it be? I couldn't tell you if I want to, but I'm extremely interested. So Karen, do we have more questions or are I we think ready to conclude? 
that we've handled all questions. I will check um, the chat one more time. Um, there is a question um, to see a sample report, um, what the customer receives. So I think it would be, what if we put a sample report uh, anonymously, we have some anonymous ones, yeah. you put that also available to the same post where we put up the, uh, the, the q and is that possible? Mm -hmm. Yeah, and Ivona can also uh, respond it immediately, so she can help okay. us out. I think uh, we can round up the webinar, I want to thank you very much for your presence, as it was the first webinar ever we hosted, um, you can leave your comments anywhere, you can send us an email, you will also definitely receive a follow-up email, we've recorded the webinar, so in case you want to take a look at it again or want to see the presentation, it will be shared with you. Um, as well as we can share the sample report and in case you have any further questions um you will know how to get in touch with us and um, there will also a possibility to try out uh, the expert review yourself um you will receive an email with a free tryout um if you would like that okay then from my side i'd like to thank everybody uh wish everybody to stay healthy and stay safe and hope to see each and every one of you when we get back free out of our lockdown again <laughs> thank you thank you bye thank you bye all. have a great day bye